Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Archidex Online 2020. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy during this global pandemic. My name is Janelle, a MASA representative, and I will be your moderator for today. Before we begin, I would like to thank Archidex 2020 for giving MASA an opportunity to conduct this session. It is our pleasure to have this collaboration with Archidex. For those who do not know what MASA is, I hope you can lend me your ear as I explain further. MASA stands for Malaysia Architecture Students Alliance, and it is a non-profit student committee operating directly under Pertubuhan Arkitek Malaysia, also known as PAM, consisting of student representatives from all architecture institutes in Malaysia. It is a platform where Malaysian architecture students join forces to learn and share with appreciation of the past, generating sustainable living in the present and bringing unlimited possibilities to the future. Our mission is to develop an effective platform and network between Malaysia architecture students and professionals. We also serve as liaisons between students and PAM. We represent the voices from architecture students. This is what we are. Now, let us greet our special guest for today. We present to you once again, the chairman of PAM Education Committee, architect Adrianta Aziz, and the one and only architect Razi Mahmoud, who will be presenting to us on the topic, Blurring Boundaries. To begin with, let us welcome architect Adrianta Aziz to say a few words. Hello, architect Adrianta, how are you? Hi, Janelle, I'm fine. Such a beautiful introduction from you. How are you, Janelle? I'm <laughs> fine, lovely day. Okay, nice to meet you back. Thank you so much, Janelle, for your introduction. So well, welcome everybody, the viewers, especially for the students. Welcome to Architects Fast Forward webinar series under education. Uh, architects um, students talk. It will be a final series today brought to you by Architects Online, jointly organized by PAM Education Committee uh, and also MASA, Malaysian Architecture Student Alliance. Thank you to all the committees, the students. Uh, we understand that you also been busy studying from home, working from home, learning from home, but the committee could spend time together with us. Thank you so much, respect for that. And also represent Acacia, Akai, Acacia Committee Architectural Education for today, our final series, 20th uh, October. Uh, I hope that we, we're gonna enjoy our talk today through Facebook Live and hopefully sooner or later we post it under YouTube, under MASA channel YouTube. Today, um, such an interesting topic that I would like to invite our mind, co co consider like an idol for all the young generation architects and also for the students, architect Razin Mahmoud. And then again, students pay attention because to the beauty surrounding you, whatever good things we build for sure and up, we're building us, right? So Daira, so architect Razin Mahmoud, I consider call him as Abang, eh? as a brother. Is a, he's a fellow uh, corporate members from PAM, graduated from Louisiana State University, Baton Rouge, United States of America, and was attached to Hemsworth Architects in Austin, Texas before returning to Malaysia in year 1989. He then became the founding director of Razin Architects in Rahat, an architectural practice operating from all the way from Johor Bahru since 1996. Razin Architects portfolio includes uh, diverse projects and clients. Some of these projects have been acknowledged both locally and internationally including the award-winning Baantara, Danai House, and Sura, Surau Nusa Indaman. Architect Razin is also actively involved in architectural education and is an external examiner for several universities in Malaysia. In year 2019, Architect Razin was appointed a young professor at the Faculty of Architecture Survey, University Technology Malaysia, UTN. Well, students, Today's talk will showcase the works of Razin Architects. It features the evolution of the practice from private residences to small offices, hotels to religious buildings. The selected works illustrate an attempt to create feel-good spaces 
blurring boundaries is evidence of a passionate desire to explore in between spaces in the tropics. It also demonstrates the firm's absorption of global influences without losing sensitivity to the local environment and social context. So students, sit back, relax, gain positive energy, set positive mindset, enjoy his sharing session today. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment or chat session on the screen and you will try our best to answer them during Q&A session at the end of the talks today. But I can promise you, it will be enjoyable and informative session today. Well, without further ado, let's welcome Architect Razin Mahmoud. Assalamualaikum, Architect Razin. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much. How are you? Much. I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much, Architect Adiranta. That was a lovely introduction just now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I feel nervous now, now that all you have said about me. I mean, students are expecting a lot, I suppose. Yeah, but, that's uh, humble, I'll humble Architect like Seven. Yep, yep. I'll try my best and uh, share uh, the journey that I've been through for the past 25 years. I yep. hope uh, the content of this talk will be uh, informative and inspirational at the same time. Uh, indeed, indeed. There's a lot of things that I wanted to share. So uh, if there's anything that's not clear, feel free to ask me at the end of the uh, session. And for today, today is only Adrianta, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be giving away two free books. Wow. Uh, to the students, uh, that ask... Uh, the most interesting question. So wow. please wait until the end of the session. And uh, to those of you who forward that uh, uh, interesting or uh, very uh, not difficult but uh, relevant uh, question, uh, we will give away two free books. Of course, you will done through Masa. Wow, lovely, right? lovely. Thank you so much, Akitarazin, for your time. I still remember when I call you that invite you you will straight away to say yes i can help you i can give a talk to the students especially for under architects platform thank you in advance thank you for your time without further ado i leave it to you over to you the floor is yours now thank you thank you very much okay bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone first and foremost i would like to thank uh, architect adrian for inviting me uh, secondly, to uh, the MC for today, Janelle, I believe. Uh, beautiful voice, beautiful introduction of the event. And thank you to Masa and Kidex as the organizer. Uh, to this topic is uh, blurring boundaries. Uh, my friend made a joke about this topic. I said, the architect is so blurred, but he himself does not know what he's talking about. So <laughs> let's see whether or not some of this can be answered in this talk. Okay, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Razin. I'm the founder of Ryan Architect. Uh, I think uh, 10 years back, we upgraded our company from sole proprietor to Razin Architect, Sunil Brahat. And I've done uh, a lot of uh, uh, jobs uh, from big size to small size. The video that I'm showing you here is a condominium that we did in the Putre Harbour at the southern part of Dobaru, close to the border of Singapore. A uh, big one, a very big job indeed. We spent five years, uh, a total of five years designing and building this, this project. And uh, this one right here is our smallest project, which is a reception counter. Uh, was done way back in 2005, uh, 15 years ago, when uh, we tried to emulate this Zen uh, effect for an office. So it's been 25 years. Uh, I graduated, graduated in 1989, uh, like what Architect said. This is a picture of me uh, in my second year. Yes, guys, uh, I was a student as well before i studied in uh, america uh, at that time 1984 everything was done manually as you can see 
drawing was done on board and we do we present with models i even built a chair as part of uh, assignment was given to us uh, during that time but uh, on top of that i was also a photographer uh, during university days i uh, submitted my work to the editorial board of uh, university's newspaper and uh, i got a job as a uh, freelance photographer for the uh, daily newspaper as well as the annual journal. And uh, this uh, uh, interest in photography was later turned into interest in capturing architecture. Uh, for your information, my first published work in Malaysia in 97 was my photograph, not my building. Uh, Somehow or other, uh, at the time, I had a lot of slides, travel slides. I donated the slides to a magazine, and then we picked it up as, as the cover for an issue. Since then, uh, I took some jobs from them, uh, traveling around Malaysia, looking at architecture, and, and capturing them for the publication in the magazine. So now I have about uh, 20 people, 15 in Johor Bahru and five in, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, it's our 25th year this year. As like I said, uh, we've been doing a lot of tropical uh, design. Uh, we build houses for people with high budget and we build houses for people with low budget as well. This is a kampung house that we built in 2004. Uh, they needed a big house, but uh, there wasn't enough budget to build walls. I say, why not you just build a house without walls? So there you have it, roof uh, right over there. We had a big family house then, way back in 2004. One of the jobs that elevated our, our name in the market was this, uh, yet again, another low-budget project, uh, Surah Musa Idaman in Johor Bahru. Uh, is practically, uh, you know, a bangsal or a shed, a big roof with a uh, perimeter brick fencing. There was no doors, no windows. We just used that opening to uh, encourage ventilation in that space. And this job has taken us to uh, receive Gold Award uh, in 2011. And it also was uh, given uh, three international awards, one from India, uh, one from Korea, another one from Asia, where we won go for sustainable design. And year 2020 has been very good to us. Uh, our project uh, was featured on the cover of uh, a book by Robert Powell, a very famous uh, writer on tropical architecture. Uh, this was June uh, 2020, and then uh, just this month, early this month, 2nd of October, I launched my own book uh, titled Blowing Boundaries with uh, Robert Powell as the writer, guest writer for the book. Okay, and this, uh, like I said, I'll be giving away two copies at the end of my talk. Now, let's get back to the topic uh, at hand. We're talking about blurring boundaries. What is actually blurring boundaries? So I'm trying to come up with a diagram that is simple and understandable by everyone. In life, there's always a border, a boundary that prohibits you from, from crossing from one place to, to another. Uh, in the case of black and white, so it is always determine that black is black, white is white, because there will be a separator that will not allow it to be mixed. My argument is that what if that border or the restriction is lifted and you get gray? Can't you use both sides of the place and, and lift the boundary or out of this equation? And then the one is about balance. This is the popular or the famous yin and yang balance diagram. Again, it's always dedicated 
line that separates the the balance. I'm I'm throwing this as a metaphor, as a, a point where we could uh, argue or deliberate on this matter. What if we all lift that boundary and have this in a way of a, a mixed uh, condition? So what happened when we do that in, in architecture? Of course, the simplest one is inside versus outside. So uh, when you live inside, uh, you try to shelter yourself from the elements, uh, from rain or sun, even from wild animals, you know, or creepy crawlies, insects, whatsoever. So in my attempt to do tropical architecture, we try to somewhat live together with the outdoors. Like this one, for instance, a very early job in 2005, uh, a plot that is 16,000 square feet where the owner only wanted small uh, spaces, small indoor spaces. He wanted the entire, the rest of the 16,000 square feet land as part of their living space. So we have the sleeping quarters here on the big one, and then we have a gym and an office and the reading sala or floating platform. And in between the space, we have water features and perimeter landscape. And one of the biggest attraction of this house is one big lawn that you have in the center of the place. So this is what you have, three simple tropical pavilions with a deep overhang. And then uh, this is where you can walk barefooted in front of your room, uh, wearing shorts without others looking at you because the side is elevated three meters above the road level. And water is introduced to add that sense of luxury or that sense of floating of being clear, uh, near water element okay even the living spaces inside are open so that you can have direct view to the outside okay and that job has taken us to another client which wanted similar arrangement but his site is a very sloping site with a nine meter difference from street level to the back boundary and he insisted on wanting a single story house how do you do a single story house on this steep slope so what we did is to cut uh, half of the land and uh, fill up the front portion and i use the pool as my retaining wall at the front portion on the left side so we decided on uh, creating a, a living level that is six meter above street level again we get total privacy where there will be no uh, people looking into the private uh, spaces of the house. So we added seven pavilions that is connected uh, uh, via the outdoor space. That is the driveway uh, and entrance. And then we put in the pavilions separated pavilions each pavilion will house different function you have master bedroom and the living room near the pool and you have a dining in the center kitchen that's near the car porch and then a guest room on the right side and then we put water element in between to make the space interesting this is where i call the side plan becomes the floor plan of the design this is a view from the top, very simple uh, rectangular shape. Uh, there's nothing to worry about the appearance because what's important is the experience inside the house. When you open the door, you see these uh, steps, floating steps that is uh, surrounded with water. It's like an announcement of arrival to the space and add that touch of luxury that you have arrived okay and all these steps are covered with uh, uh, glass uh, 
uh, roof with shading device and the lawn or the trees becomes part of the living space so one will wonder is this inside or are you outside the house that's where the term ring boundaries come in. you don't really have a definite boundary the moment you open up the front door you are inside the house regardless whether it's uh, in air conditioned space under the roof or outside in the open area you are still inside a private uh, a private house private space this is the view that was taken uh, a few years after it was completed this house was completed uh, more than 10 years ago i think it was completed in 2010 and this is the view now with the landscape uh, uh, being uh, tall and matured then another, another one is the house same thing sloping site uh, we cut the site to fill up the front portion and then that's where we had the uh, storage and the kitchen area and then again water was very important so we uh, put that in because we wanted to create a view for the uh, client and this is what it looks like when it was first completed uh, we had trees inside the space the entire ground floor was open yeah that is to encourage uh, natural ventilation okay the palette was simple uh, i used black for floor uh, timber in its original color and the rest is white and the door are uh, sliding doors that open outwards to the lawn and uh, upstairs the family area a huge area six meter by six meter family space we have skylight on the stairwell and then we have louvers where uh, we need to provide uh, privacy or screening from or from the harsh uh, late afternoon sunlight this is the view of the uh, dining space uh, this is what it looks like a few years back the trees have grown now and view from the swimming pool where you can see that the entire ground floor is open uh, the part that is enclosed is only the family area where it's uh, probably air conditioned at night but other than that the, the half more than half of the ground floor is uh, open view of guest lounge and formal dining table. Uh, this view from the pool at night. This view from the front is facing late afternoon sun, like I said. So we have full height louvers that provide shades to the big glass opening that we have. And then these are the steps going towards guest lounge. And this is the view that I took this morning from the bedroom. The trees are so big and I can hardly see the pavilion that uh, is across the pool. Okay, another one is replicate versus innovate. Uh, when do you replicate and when do you innovate? Uh, we are talking about serious symbolism. Uh, in this case, it's a religious building. Uh, to be safe is to just do whatever that has been accepted by the public. In case of a mosque, maybe the normal thing to do is to do a building with, with uh, domes. So at one glance, at one look, you know that it is a mosque. But uh, we wanted, again, to lift that, that limit, to lift that boundary, and we wanted to show progress of the religion saying that islam is not just about domes and minaret islam is also progressive so we propose a small prayer hall instead of a big one like this one in sungai juran pontian the one 350 a hall for 350 worshippers we said uh, on on normal days you only have like 20 people but on Friday, we have 350 people. Why not we do a hall that's air-conditioned, that's comfortable for your daily use, 
and allow for big uh, overspill spaces. So that was agreed. This is what we propose. No domes. Uh, even the minarets uh, is just a, a, a cage, more or less, like steel, uh, hollow section steel that is built about, uh, I don't know, 50 or 60 feet high. And then we use a square glass in the center, surrounded by uh, covered uh, shades around it. Uh, we will ask why why square we said uh Kaaba is square so it's black so we got away with that and they accepted it and we say the overspill space should be a garden because uh you know if you are busy doing high rise time you can always uh put a plastic mat or put uh, a tent to cover the additional worship during high rise period and uh, to give shade uh, to the spring area, we put uh, calligraphy, uh, but that was rejected by the uh, religious authority. We're not allowed to use calligraphy on buildings. I don't know for what reason, but uh, we're finally to use the form of shading device. So it was built, concrete was only for the first, uh, for the first floor or ground floor and the other tall structures are done in steel so that it'll be simpler to build. And then we use precast concrete columns as a screen wall around the glass box. And uh, there, as you see, it was, it was actually completed. But uh, I must admit it's not accepted uh, that well by the users uh after it was ready to hand it over they put a dome on top of the minaret good thing they put it on top of minaret i mean it would look funny if they put it on top of the glass box this view from inside there's no calligraphy uh but we use uh, timber random timber screen instead uh, this view from the center of the praying area uh, we put uh, the circular light as a feature in that double volume praying area. Now, the mistake that we did here was that there was no uh, direct uh, involvement with the users. We only deal with the builder or the developer of the mosque. So we were, when we called to do another mosque uh, in 2017, this time around we, we get to speak that to the users and explain to them what our intention of trying to be different trying to show progress trying to lift that boundary and where uh, a masjid or a mosque should have domes in a way it's sort of create uh, uh, an element where it is more accepted by all and not just one religion so it's a small box again, air condition. Only uh, they wanted a space for two thousand people, but we put in a uh, prayer hall for just three hundred thousand, but with big overspill area, and uh, we created triple volume. So we have classroom on the upper floors, a uh, big uh, plaza or yard area around the building, so that during high raya they can overspill, they can pray underneath the trees. That's the detailed floor plan right there. And this was the first uh, image that we showed to them uh, because the budget was limited. Uh, we use simple material, uh, brick wall without plaster, and we use expanded metal screen for the outside uh, wall. Uh, and then we get uh, donation. The entire building was built with private donations. I mean, we don't ask for money from the government, we collect money from people who donate to the committee. Okay, and we also show future development that this could expand uh, for more, for the use of many people. Uh, we could build a hall at the back, uh, but that was not built right now. This is our proposal on the interior of the masjid. Uh, just brick wall, 
with uh, three-story glass atrium and it's surrounded with trees that we plant in between the glass and the outer screen. So we got a bit of money. So instead of using a expanded metal, we use a galvanized sheet as our screen. Uh, we actually drew up a random screen for the external facade. Uh, it was all done on site. It was very difficult actually to have it random because we had to draw every single panel and we had to guide the contractor to follow our, our drawings. Uh, we also get the minaret to be donated by a phone company where they build minarets and pay rent and then they just have to follow our diagonal our triangular pattern on the uh, on the minaret this is a plaza with uh, lots of trees it will take uh, i don't know many years five years maybe 10 years for tree to be matured so that uh, the entire uh, plaza area will be a cool area and we have provided uh, prayer lines so that uh, they are aligned with the prayers or with the worshippers uh, inside the building. It's called Masjid Daing Abdul Rahman, Nusay Daman. And uh, one of the features is where we put uh, trees between outside and inside the glass area. And you can still use that as praying area if the uh, main prayer hall is locked. This view of inside, uh, custom design chandelier that is hung at a uh, low level so that we can replace the bulbs easily without having to use uh, scissor leaf or sky leaf. Okay, uh, play of uh, raw material, just brick uh, with a governor sheet. This view from the staircase looking towards the front of the building. That's the prayer hall. And uh, from Moss, we move to an uh, office building. This is CIDB uh, office building, a proposal that we did. The entire facade is covered with vertical fins because of the orientation of the building. We need to protect the glass opening from low morning or late afternoon sun. So this was our proposal. Uh, it was accepted. Uh, we free up the entire ground floor, like what we did for the night house. Uh, we know the client wanted a lobby and wanted an exhibit exhibition space. So we said, uh, you don't really require a control environment for your exhibit because CIB being the uh, authority for construction industry, what they exhibit is uh, material and probably machinery. So we say we can do that under a covered uh, space. So the entire ground floor is uh, wallless. So you can have uh, natural ventilation and the lobby uh, is also an open space. We have trees in between that. And it was completed three years ago. And for the sake of uh, uh, promoting uh, green energy, we put solar and uh, turbine for the compound lighting. This is the lobby. Uh, the tree is going bigger now. So it's one big open space with uh, natural ventilation. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is the latest job that we did in the office, main main versus nature. It's a Kluang farm stay, uh, started as uh, cabins actually. We have a 10 acre site uh, somewhere near Gunung Lamba in Kluang. Very hilly site, beautiful uh, surrounding. Uh, it was originally uh, all palm estate, uh, but wanted to do uh, a place where you could rent out and people could come and do some uh, vegetable gardening together with the operator. So it's the picture of the site, like I said, very beautiful. I started with this 10 feet by 20 feet cabin, just enough for two person, a table and one toilet. And then we put them together, uh, eight cabins 
with uh, an open space in the center for gathering or for some uh, activities together. And then it has to be on stilts because we don't want to cut the, the land too much. So uh, originally they were packed together, cabins and the uh, multi-purpose space. But we push it aside so that we can allow for uh, trees to go in between the building. And we use steel structure. Uh, that's uh, a mock-up. We did a side office with some simple material, but we were not too happy about it. Now it has changed a lot. We are putting in insulation and whatnot to make sure that we get the comfort level that we require. This is Marwan, our director, uh, discussing with the client on site. As you can see on, on his right, uh, the original sketch of the site plan. Uh, another block is the reception uh, building where guests has to come here and register themselves. There's also a library there. They could read about farming or whatever. Also built on top of a slope. And that's the design of the reception building. We wanted to make it light. We wanted to, to show that the roof is floating. So we put glass in between the walls and the roof. You only see small structures holding the uh, the roof. Uh, we even put the plans on the drone view to make sure the client understands the actual location of the building. And these are newer uh, renderings showing a different kind of cladding for the building. From cabin design, it turns into, I would say, a four-star hotel in the middle of a vegetable farm. That's another option for the cladding. And view of the interior, instead of just for two person, we can now put four persons We're using platform. You can put storage. Uh, we are putting a mattress instead of bed, and we have folding platform at upper level. And that's view of the uh, uh, accommodation unit. And next to it is the uh, function hall. Now, because of the demand in comfort level, because demand has changed, people are so used to aircon, we decided to aircon the entire place but uh, they still can go out and enjoy nature in the, in the farm. Okay, so there's view of the overall uh, accommodation in the multi-purpose hall. Uh, we can uh, host a wedding for 100 people, I think. And then this is the progress view. Uh, you can see on the right, the reception building is under construction. This is the ground beam for the uh, accommodation and multi-purpose hall. And look at the view that you get when you stay in these cabins. And we use uh, gabion wall as a uh, retaining chair for the reception building. Okay, another one, last one. It's not my project, but I wanted to show you the, the power of removing the boundary that we always have in our mind. I'm putting private property versus shared area. This is a view of an end lot for a terrace housing project somewhere in Johor Bahru. As you can see, there are lots of green trees and uh, uh, low shrubs that is kept well. And notice that there's no renovation, there's no front uh, gate. And to be honest, this is only possible because the front boundary that you normally have in front of the house is moved to be at the same line as your front wall. So what you get is a clear six meter or 20 feet of that uh, setback space as green space. And because the boundary is shifted, 
the outside area becomes a shared area and this is where you could use that and apply laws that force every single owner to make sure that they are allowed uh, the management is allowed to plant trees and put up uh, green uh, hedges to be the frontage of the house this you will not be able to do in normal uh, terrace house setting because everybody wants to be at their front boundary everybody wants to make sure that they maximize the property but lifting the boundary is actually a good thing and uh, it can create a better environment for all, all of us another one is an example where the boundary is even put in inside the water and the fact that uh, you don't have back lanes and uh, water is becoming the frontage of the house and not just your front road so students in order for you to be different uh, you got to think outside the box and trust me it is a, a good experience uh, it's not easy but it's something that worth looking into okay that's the end of my talk uh, like i said we have uh, books to give away after this and uh, i welcome all kinds of questions and uh, thank you very much to everyone and i'm going to pass this back to janelle or architect adrianta yeah. thank you very much right Wow, Architect Razin, um, I think that's um, truly beautiful. And then the design with environment related with response with the environment, mostly your design related with nature together, come balance. And then I can I can foresee a very strongly basic fundamental and the the principle of design from from all your your works. I can see that the students can learn from that. Uh, you know the fundamental about the exit point. Uh, the the datum line, the contrast, and a lot more, mm. and then the student might might learn from you. Perhaps I I, I don't see any question yet. I just giving a spark here. Uh, maybe maybe architect Razid, you could you advise to the students the important about the site context, you know, because mostly when I I, I run through many IPTM IPTS from the university, the students have a lacking on information of the site context. And then they start to design it beyond it, you know, when you say it got boundaries and then how to adapt it. Because the way you're saying that the versus man-made versus nature, the, the, the replicate versus, you know, of elements, mm -hmm. you know, um, can you share how, how you can derive your design with the context, site context itself? Okay. First and foremost, you got to understand uh, your limits. When I say uh blurring boundaries i didn't say remove the boundaries i just say make it blurry i mean there is in a way as a metaphor to like encourage you to go beyond to think outside the box but then there are uh, things that uh, you cannot avoid uh, like the size of the rooms like the terrains like uh, available uh, shades or access or whatsoever so you need to really, really understand your site in order for you to do a design that is uh, truthful to the site. Because it's not the same as buying a standard design and just plonk it on your, on your available area. You need to understand the site. I think that is a fundamental issue. It's very, very important. Right. How about the concept itself, Architect Razin? The concept. Is it mostly your concept derived from the site's force? <laughs> uh, yeah, students have always uh, asked me about yeah. this. Uh, I think concept is is a very Asian thing, I think. Oh, we are so used to talk about symbolism, like when you build something, it represents this. It's like uh, the cap of police force so you're using a building to uh, symbolize the head of <laughs> some agency or whatsoever uh, and then sometimes we say this is a project in Malacca so you're doing a building to take the shape from a Malacca tree or 
So sometimes that could be too direct. Or you're designing a house for a rugby player, you want it to be in the shape of a rugby ball. So we should avoid that. I think uh, there's more to design than just concept. Uh, first and foremost, it has to answer the needs of your users. We must be able to understand their needs. Some say architects solve problems that the user do not even know they have it. So yeah. uh, we, we are problem solvers. So exactly. we need to understand the problems and then provide the best solution for it. Exactly. Concept can come in later, I think. I mean, concept is more like a theme. Right. So you want you want a, a horse racing theme. That everything in the hotel will be shaped from a horse. Like you have a horse leg as your table leg, or you have the horse head as your table lamp. Yeah. So there is a theme, but it doesn't have to be so rigid. Uh, more importantly, it's, it's about understanding the requirement. Right, right. Yeah. So, students, I need a question from you because Architect Razin already announced that whoever give a good question, you're going to have a, a free books from him. Yeah, Blurring Boundaries. It's a hot from the oven. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there you are. So please do ask question. Only left two or two books only. Before that, I just want to announce here, Architect Razin, our good friend from Philippines, Emmanuel. Emmanuel Canlas. Wow. Yes. Money. Hi, Emmanuel. Money. Yes. He just wants to say congratulations to you to be an awesome man, architect. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Thank, Thank you, you, Money, for joining us. And then, uh, um, Architect Razi, uh, okay, before waiting for, for students putting the question, this is a very common uh, situation that I foresee from, from the student everywhere, from IPTA, IPTS, even from international when I visit many countries. The student might take a longer time to derive a concept, and then they spend a lot of time on, on 2D, planning, circulation, and so on. But commonly, they only left about one or two weeks to leave for the form and to the roof, especially. Always come to the last minute to, to make a, a roof design. I mean, I have to declare here, this is my, my experience. Eh, experience come from any universities. The student always come last minute to, to design a roof and a form itself. So is there any advice from you, Architect Razin? Okay, they say form follows function. I mean, you've heard exactly. that, right? You, yep. you determine the usage first, and then form will follow it. But uh, sometimes design is not that, that rigid, like I said. You can work from inside out or from outside in. Uh, I don't know, after 25 years of doing things, you know, every day, doing sketches and solving design issues, Sometimes we just get the basic size right first. Yes. And then we start putting in the details or interesting spaces. We have to answer, in, in our case, for practitioners, we have to answer the, the cost issues first. We've got to make sure that whatever we show to the client is buildable within, yes. you know, uh, and it's affordable by them. So, uh, yeah, no problem. Work on your layout but you don't have to complete it all the way you can stop in the middle and work from outside as well and then you change the internal layout to fit the messing or the shape that you have uh, created from your model the problem with students is that uh, there are too many uh, input from outside pinterest uh, yeah. arch daily the zine yeah. You name yeah. it. I mean, you type single story bungalow, you have thousands of single story bungalow. I mean, you can even be very specific, concrete bungalows. You get thousands of images. But uh, that is taking shortcuts. Uh, right. If I were to compare this with uh, cooking skills, yes, you can look at recipes and cook a nice uh, dish immediately. 
but it's important that you understand the function of garlic, of onion, of pepper, whatsoever. Then you can create your own recipe and come up with your own dish. So Precisely. First, first year, second year, I would say go play with uh, color, color wheels. Uh, don't get uh, worry too much on structures or whatsoever. So it's about form making. Um, yes. Second year, maybe you have to start to know about construction, whatsoever. But first year, have a ball, have fun. Design yes. is fun. Yeah, designing less it's like having fun. I can <laughs> see uh, our your good friend and my lecturer, Dr. Ismawi Endut here. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's also Hi, here. Dr. Maui. He's, yes, he's also my 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 master sifu, my lecturer. As, and then he during my time as a student, um while, while in process doing 2D in the circulation, I always come up with the models. So that we can mm. learn how to write the form and then you know spontaneously parallel to the process of how to design the the roof and so on uh okay now we can see a lot of questions here architect razin yeah i want to see which one is the best so i need to drop down one by one let's go one by one here so let's go from from vinci okay hi sir i'm vinci from masa uh would you consider having vegetation as a substitute way to blur the boundary since i sometimes see the shade of the trees as a way to blur the boundary by having a public space with a microclimate it's from vinci okay first question from vinci okay so what's your response resin okay like i said uh i'm into living together with nature uh, there's a saying that if it's not nature, it's architecture. Uh, men used to live in cave to protect them from, uh, you know, extreme temperatures outside or wild beasts. Yeah, they yeah. have dinosaur there outside the cave. So then, when we get uh, the technology, we created tools and we created our own shelter. So it's architecture. It's man-made. So mm -hmm. I would like to promote uh, harmony by living together, man-made and nature. Uh, you see that we cleared the area for uh, the Kluang farm stay, but we quickly planted trees uh, to get that green effect around the building that we designed. So some trees we, we kept because we wanted that trees to shade our building. So yes, Vinci, I would, I would say Trees is important. Even if you look at uh, Geoffrey Bauer's statement, yep. design can be boxy, design can be anything, but you got to make sure you have lots of trees. Yes, yes. If it allows you, don't plant trees that will damage your building. That is dangerous because trees <laughs> might fall off and hit uh, the tenants or the users. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. I can see our, our Johorian friends, architects, architect Samsia Abdullah, Miss Heidi Lau, everybody say hi to you here. Yeah. Hi. Right. Let's go for the second question here from Lim Xiao Tang. How do you view physical model comparing to the 3D software model? I think that's, that's a good question for students. <laughs> they have a tools on software on the 3D software compared to the physical model. During our time, those days, we don't have the software. Mm, we have to yeah. do a physical model. But today, today's generation, they have a software. So now the question mm. is how to compare this from physical model to the 3D software models? Well, uh, it's technology. Uh, if it's simple and you can uh, view it with a computer model, I say go for it. But there are times that computer models are not enough for you to study the issues or for you to uh, explain it to your client. That's why you need physical model. Mm. And uh, physical model, uh, the good thing is that it's not just about uh, explaining the design. In most cases, it will also explain the construction part because you are actually building it. Whereas uh, computer model, you can stretch and uh, delete 
And you can't do that with physical model. If you want a beam that stretch across six meters in scale, you have to build that beam. Yeah. So I would say do both. Yeah. For simple one, use uh, computer modeling. But when you have the time, uh, in, in fact, some universities are making it mandatory to have physical model. Hmm. Yeah. And more often than not, it's just uh, boxy stuff with, uh, you know, just showing the messing from outside. But I'm hoping to get real detailed model. If it's a timber project, I want to see how the timber is put together. Uh, no need to have the tangam or the timber jointing. But if it's yeah. double timber, you show double timber. And mm. I, I like to make a physical model as real as possible. Uh, most people would uh, forget uh, road levels. Uh, for the road to meet the grass, you actually have curbs. And it's good to show that curve. You don't have to paint white, black, white, black curves, but you have to show that line and show that difference of level. So, yeah, right. I, 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 I still keep some of my physical model. Even for the moss that I showed you, I built a model for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine enough. Very good advice. The next question from Putra Puteh. Yeah? Putra Puteh asking this. May I know how to tackle up smell from river without putting a wall that closed the view as a blurring boundaries? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a smell. You gotta, see, when you have issues, you have to tackle it from the source. Mm -hmm. Uh, if the issue comes from the water and water is smelly, you got to treat that water. Uh, not every issue is architectural. Some issues are better left to other specialists. So you don't have to deal with it, but you can get the environment specialist, water specialist to come and advise you. Uh, there are ways to do... Uh, uh, economic filtration system or even natural filtration system where you use some type of plants to uh, trap uh, garbage or whatever. Uh, I hate to put walls if you have water feature near your site. You have to maximize the view and, and remove that wall so that you can get view directly to your water body. So like I said, uh, there are issues, there are problems, but there are many ways to solve the problems. It doesn't mean that uh, the walls will even stop the smell from coming into your space. So tackle it from the source. <coughs> okay, All right. The SWOT analysis, perhaps, <coughs> yeah? is most essential to do it. The next question, Akita Razin, yeah? from Idrus, Edith. Very interesting question. How does one thing outside of the box? I struggle to do it and tend to overthink and delay my process when solving designs, which sometimes disrupts my design language. <laughs> wow, interesting. That is common for all students, I think. Even I, I had to go through that. Uh, how, how do we decide? When do we stop doodling and start working on actual drafting or actual documenting of ideas mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's about pressure uh, you tend to delay everything until last minute you uh, you only have less than 24 hours suddenly you have to decide on everything you just do it you don't care whatever happens you have to finish it right uh, and in most cases it will go back to your original idea Right, because they say the first idea is always the best because that's the one that naturally come to you. So what we did in our office, we brainstorm three or four of us. We brainstorm on on design direction, and then we stick to one, and just work on improving it. Uh, if you look at the plans, I mean all the plans that I show you, they are all boxy and very straight, very normal floor plans three boxes in one big compound one uh, linear box that is mm -hmm. facing the pool and mm -hmm. then 
a few boxes put together, which is separated apart so that I can plant landscape in between. That's development. So the initial idea is very important. Uh, be sure to research. Don't simply decide without doing research. Yeah. Uh, more importantly, is the, the topic at hand, if your client is talking about uh, having vegetable farm or orchard farm, you, you got to know what he, she wants to plant even, what type of trees that she intend to have in the area. So it's either that you shy away or you re remove that from your architecture or you try to blend it with your creation. So the objective is to ensure you you add value to the needs. I love yeah. your approach. Yeah, I love your approach because we need to work as a team. When you say that brand, brainstorming with your team and so on, same mm. goes to the student. Even though you have a different ideas, but the best platform is when you sit down together with your team, you know, and discuss among your sharing the idea. But yeah. to be fair, architect Razin, our MC Janelle also wanted to ask the question here. <laughs> so Janelle want ask you that many of your design, okay, involves large outdoor spaces. Did you do any simulation on how the building can withstand against our climate that have abundant sunlight and rain? Some designs include manipulating shadows too. Is that well thought or it just an extra elements? Okay, good question, Janelle. Uh, in short, how, how do I know that it works? Yeah. I don't. It's an experiment. And you Correct. do this over time uh, because uh, I, I'm trying to avoid doing expensive uh, studies on how material would withstand uh, in our uh, climate. But we yeah. know for a fact that bricks can last. Uh, but a brick will uh, have joints, mortar joints, and you mm. cannot have a weatherproof uh, wall if you just have brick without plaster. Mm -hmm. uh, in most cases, people uh, erect the brick and then they will plaster it, maybe qu three quarter inch outside, and they would seal it to prevent moisture from coming in. But when I use uh, exposed brick, I don't have that the protection water will seep through in between the bricks and will create fungus uh, on the internal wall so what we did we extend the roof we wanted to keep that brick as it is without plastering but we don't want water to come in we extended the roof you can see in my mm. uh, masjid the overhang is at least like what four mm. meters yeah, large overhangs, yeah. Very large overhang away from the brick wall. And then I have trees and I have screens that prevent water from touching that surface. So I got away with that. But in some other cases where we still wanted to have the brick appearance from outside, we don't go for single brick. We go for brick uh, cladding. Mm -hmm. So we go for thin brick. And then we put it outside a mm. uh, 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 weather tight wall. Yeah. Uh, sun is always your enemy. Yes, uh, very harsh sunlight. Uh, whatever paint or whatever coating that you have on the building will fade after five years. So you make sure the client knows about this. Uh, yeah. You need maintenance, just like having a car or just like wearing the clothes that you have. You need to wash it. Uh, I've, after some time, you need to replace it. Same thing goes with building. There should be proper maintenance uh, schedule for your building. I agree yeah. with you. Totally agree with you, Architect Razin, because all the process is could, looks like experimental from one a project to another project. Mm. We learn from, from the experience and then we want to be better for the next project. Mm. Next question is not from the student, Architect Razin. Next question will be from graduate architects, ah. Dayang Aimi Husna. Okay, the question is, house of future Malaysia, how it affects to the society life quality of Malaysian society? So what do you think about it? Wow, that's, that's a broad question. Future yeah. of Malaysia. One thing for sure, I think there's future in architecture because a lot of students are joining this event. huh? Yep. So that, that is the 
uh, evidence of desire to get more information or knowledge on the practicing side okay that's a good thing okay how's how about our future uh you can't tell the future you have to go through it you play it by the ear but one thing for sure the laws has to be changed in order to suit uh the current needs current requirement uh i'm saying maybe uh laws on parking should be changed because now cars are very expensive we can't we maybe one maybe one time we can't afford to have cars we just use grab or other uh, e-hailing uh, service so if there's no cars why do you need to provide two parkings per unit for a condominium tower so i'm I'm seeing uh, the change in that direction. Some other countries, like like Singapore, for for instance, if your building is close to an, an uh, MRT station, the parking requirement is reduced by I don't know, sixty percent or more than that, because cars are liability is not uh, is not clean. Uh, it creates. Uh, carbon produce carbon around your building and then it affects the air that you breathe so i would say there'll be uh, more and more concern about the, the quality of uh, living in the country and it's happening throughout malaysia actually it's not just in kl and everybody's talking about green buildings and doing responsible design yeah uh, can we take a moment for a while yeah this is a solar asar yeah just take a moment for a while. Okay, are we okay now, Razin? Yes, I am. Yeah. Can you hear the Azan from your side? Yes. Okay, I'm going to go for another two questions here. Okay. Uh, the question from Christine, Christine Lau, quite an interesting question here. I, I hope you can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can tell Razin, you have been a lecturer before. yeah. So she asking this, what do you think of the architecture institution as a whole in Malaysia and our syllabus? And what your commands to be on how to improve it? This is her question okay that's uh do i have another hour <laughs> <laughs> just make it precise then <laughs> okay uh yes i've been a lecturer and i was also an external examiner and industry advisor to some uh design school here in malaysia okay uh what i realized is that almost every school is doing the same thing uh is to prepare the students to get them ready for the job market uh somehow or rather from my own uh, observation this is my own opinion yeah this is my personal opinion somehow or rather we are somewhat pushing students to be uh technical people of course architecture is science and art uh 
technical meaning you got to handle the science part but uh, we are lacking in the art part uh, most uh, design school will ask for uh, services drawings and uh, making sure you show air conducting water supply firefighting and things like that uh, but because of that requirement some of the creative part was uh, left out so i know this is what the industry wants uh, bosses out there wants the students when they employ a new style they want you to be able to do drafting almost immediately uh, if i can share my experience in the us uh, i worked there for a year uh, we have no draftsman uh, drafting uh, is done by junior architects like me when i first joined uh, the hansai clovis hansai architects we do manual draftings we we draw up plans sections elevation detailing whatsoever uh, design was done by uh, principals by the bosses uh, we do uh, detailing for them uh, but somehow or other uh, over here we are asked to do drafting at school level because if you can't do drafting that means you can't work as an architect uh, that is said but that's what the market wants so i'm hoping that maybe we need to find a balance uh i've always commented this to some of the school i think first year to be fun year uh in fact from from my own opinion i, I don't think first year should be doing buildings you should be doing sketchings and color wheels and 3d models uh, photography photography yeah. things like that yeah yeah uh, get your hands to be busy with uh, creative work and then you only start doing technical or uh, you know complicated stuff in uh, second year onward mm. and then uh, another thing that universities or the institution can do is to help promote the profession like what you're doing now adrianta yeah uh, but said this is only done among architects among arch practicing architects and architecture students uh, there should be a time where we celebrate our profession we promote it to the masses uh, we do competition among primary students or we do uh, exhibition of university work in shopping malls we show from sketches to uh completion of a project i think that would be a fine or a, a interesting yeah. uh features to promote the profession because they say one day architecture will be replaced by uh artificial intelligence hmm. yeah, anything that is measured that can be uh, quantified mm. will be replaced by algorithm and calculation but not creative work we are on the creative side exactly so, so we should be pushing on uh, being the champion for giving creative uh, solutions to problems yeah and educating the, the, educating, yeah. educating the yeah. public yeah yeah i agree with that uh, we we're going to do like recently in in pam we have done this uh, little architects program you know, yeah. we open up for all the kids to participate uh, the architectural competition like drawings, build yeah. the model and so on. So we're going to do that again. Yeah, we're going to do that again. I think I agree with you that it's about time that you need to educate the public. Mm. Okay, let's go for the last question of the day. The question from Sufyan. Dapian, yeah, Sufyan. Kind of an interesting question here, Architect Razin. What is your advice for new graduates who will face a challenging time in starting their career? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's tough. Uh, gotta be honest with you, with COVID-19 and with the uh, economy of the world right now, uh, it's tough. Uh, there'll be jobs out there, but you gotta fight 
to get the jobs. Uh, same thing with us practitioners here. So how do you put yourself above everyone else? So look at your portfolio. Uh, it's not just about grades. It's also uh, the work that you do. Sometimes the work will speak for itself. But more importantly is your level of confidence. When you speak to people, future employer, future bosses, whatsoever, you've got to show them that uh, you are the guy. Yeah. So knowledge is important. It's not that difficult now. You click YouTube or whatsoever. You want to talk about uh, sustainable design. You want to talk about green building. You can watch that on YouTube. Hundreds or thousands of TED Talks or whatsoever. So you got to equip yourself with uh, current news. Uh, and you got to speak well, both in Malay and in English. Uh, because when you join a firm, you represent the firm. And I, for one, will make sure that I got the best candidate. Uh, I interviewed up to, what, 15, even to 20 people before I decide when I choose my, my colleague or the team member. So for those of you who are graduating, all the best. Uh, be sure to prepare yourself. Uh, it'll be tough, but sometime when when the going gets tough, the tough gets creative. You'll find a way to survive. Yeah? All the best to you guys. Correct, correct. I agree with you. I just can add on that. Not only that, advice from Razin. Okay, the Razin is now. I think you should come with the right attitude as well, mm. you know? And to be multitasking, your, you, you should be have a, your own expertise, your skill into it. There we, are. we have an eight question, Architect Razin. So mm. do you think which one is the best for you to, to hand over to you? you know? We have I an eight think, question here. Well, we will discuss uh, separately and then right. uh, the organizer will contact the winner. Wonderful. Yeah. So beware all the question from those who want to ask us now we're going to update to you from masa we'll keep in touch with you announce who's the winner to get the free blurring boundaries yeah books from architect razin so very well architect razin thank you so much but i want to tell you something here all the viewers all the students i've been to razin's house before i've been to architect razin's office in in johor baru do you mind architect razin that you know uh to share this experience you know, through virtual reality, can you bring us around to your office, to your house, and then explain? <laughs> and it is a very short one. Is it possible to do that? Well, I I can do that, but uh, right. it's not going to be pretty. It's a messy office, I can tell you. It's all right. That's normal. <laughs> Even my office is worse than yours. <laughs> worse so, than yours. It's all right. How, how do I do this? Do I? Okay, let's go. Phone? I think I think uh, the. Lillian, can we, we can can we do convert to the to the phone? All right. So now, uh, they want to. Yes, there you are. Okay. How about the audio? Is it all right? Yes, I can hear okay, you now. Cool. Oh, okay. Viewers, students, special showcase here. Architect Razin will bring us the future tour. Yeah, future <laughs> tour. So this is your office. Yeah. This is my room. Yes. That's my technical assistant over there, IT yes. assistant. <laughs> That's the my table, tour. as I said. Uh, this is very messy. This is the office. I'm going outside my room uh, towards the working area. Hi. Say hi, everyone. You are live. Hi. <laughs> still See? working, yeah. All right. Yeah, they're still working. It's 4.20 mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So we have a total of uh, 15 people in JB. This right. is the reception area. Yeah. Lots of glass, lots of green. And then uh, I'm going outside my office. Mm -hmm. That is my house, which is also used as additional meeting area. Sometimes we got uh, big crowds, suppliers, and so on and so forth. They come and have... Uh, meeting at this space. Right. That's uh, my family area. Mm -hmm. 
You see, uh, the, the way you design, yeah, you, you open up to the nature. Yes, yes, in, yeah? yes. Yeah, yes. Very airy, open. fresh ventilation, natural ventilation. I can foresee that, yeah. right. See, the doors is open yeah. up yeah. maximum. Right. And the special view that I have is the landscaping outside. Beautiful. And then yeah. the... A waterfall and yep. a floating platform. Lovely. Now I'm going back. Before that, can you show the, the front cover of uh, Robert Powell's books? There, there's a there's a front cover there. Can you can you go to the the front elevation of your pavilion just now? I saw it. Yeah, I think I have to. Get the book here. Oh, there. Right. There it is. Yes. Yes. Can you to the... Yeah. <laughs> See, exactly. there's a cover. <laughs> that's the cover of the books. Yep. Volume 2, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the and pavilion. there you are. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. This is the house All right. the big tree that I talk about. Yes. I mean, really big trees. And then the shading screen from the bedroom. Yeah. Well, hopefully after all this pandemic issue has been set up, I should come back again to Johor Bahru yeah. to visit your place again. Yeah. You're welcome. Anytime. Yeah. Because I can see a new things over there. When I came over, yeah. there's no such new elements that I can see the new elements there. Wonderful, yeah. architect Razin. Can you just turn back to your face now? We just end up uh, our session here. I am not sure I know how to do that. <laughs> it's a selfie, maybe selfie? Good job. <laughs> okay. okay, I've been there. This is your lobby. And the mm -hmm. staircase, the spiral staircase, the steel staircase is still there. Oh, yeah, I can you see remember? Yes, wonderful. Okay. You can see a lot of comments from the viewers. Beautiful space, special virtual tour from architect Razin. Yeah, from Mashita. It's all oh. his experience. Yes. Okay, let's go back. back to the office. All right. I don't know how to do <laughs> selfie on the phone. All right, it's okay, it's okay. Well, I can see your winning award certificates over there. Yeah. It looks better than mine office. Mine is worse. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. I'm back. Uh, Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Architect Razin, for your time and for your tour. It's such a truly informative, truly informative session. I, I do really hope that the students um, might learn something from here. Yeah? And then such a wonderful and very rich sharing. I hope all the students, all the viewers enjoy and well and gain a lot of information and knowledge here. With that, any last word from you, Architect Razin, before we end up uh, the session? Just thank you, the organizer, for allowing me to share my, my experience. And just a reminder to all the students out there, uh, there's no shortcut. Yeah. you got to work hard. Yeah, love is tough, but you just have to face it. And uh, whatever you do, make sure that you enjoy it. Love what you do, do what you love. Design is fun. Make sure <laughs> that you love design. Yeah, we are important people. Uh, we, we are heroes as well, not just police and firemen. Architects create spaces for them too. So architects can contribute a lot to the community and to the people and to the environment. So be proud of your, your work, be proud of what you do. And there's always future in architecture. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Architect Razin. I hope we keep in touch. Be safe, yeah, be healthy, yeah. Abarazin. We keep in touch soon. Thank you so much again. Thank you to all of the viewers. Thank you all the students. Uh, if today, blurring boundaries from architect Razin, there are no boundaries 
but only an opportunities and possibilities. So without that, uh, I would like to say thank you so much to organizer and to MASA, the committees. This is our final session of the Architects Online. With that, be safe, be healthy, enjoy your life. Thank you so much. I pass thank to you. the MC, Janelle. Bye -bye. Over to you, Janelle. Thank you so much, Architect Ajanta, and thank you, Architect Razin, for sharing with us an eye-opening uh, view on how to design by blurring different types of boundaries, as well as for the advisors <laughs> and wonderful motivation you gave to all the students and young architects. This marks the end of our talk today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on today's online sharing session. Thank you so much for our special guest, architect Razin Mahmoud, for sharing his ideas with us. We hope you really enjoyed it and gained a lot from him. Also, a very big thank you to architect Ajanta for being the moderator. And last but not least, I would like to thank Pam and Architects for giving us the opportunity to have this collaboration in Architects Online 2020. Stay tuned for the next webinar that will be coming your way. The next lineup of architects will surely knock your socks up with more interesting topics. Make sure to keep in touch and follow us on Masa's Instagram and Facebook for more updates. And do check out Architects Online for more interesting webinar sessions. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Be well. Bye. Bye-bye. Ha, <laughs>